Hello, and how are you doing today? I have um, something I'd love to share. And I've, I've talked about this on the podcast before, but I think it's so important that I want to talk about it again. Recently, I was on a summit and as the hostess host was wrapping up the summit, she said to me, she was said, what do you think, Kelly, is the most important fitness habit you can have? And I know what she was expecting. She was expecting me to say something like, oh, fitness consistency or fun, do things you love, uh, make sure you move every day, you know, all the stuff that I always talk about. And I paused for a minute because I wasn't expecting that question. So I paused for a second. And I thought about it. I went, you know what? I really think that the most important fitness habit we can have is a good night's sleep. And it's true. I really do believe that because everything comes from that. Like you've heard me say it a thousand times, but it's that cascading effect of good. When you've had a good night's sleep, then what happens is that you have more energy the next day. You've got a better, mm, you've got, got a much better mood. You've got a like better outlook on life. It's, it's like everything is easier with a good night's sleep. So from the most important fitness habit, I think that if we focus on our sleep, and I'll, and I'll talk about this real quick, because I've talked about this before. Like one of my first episodes in the podcast back, I think it was episode 24, which is three years ago or longer, is one of the first things I talked about. Because I have seen again and again and again in my life and my clients' lives that when you focus on your sleep and you get a good night's sleep, and good night's sleep is different for everybody, but trust me, it usually means at least seven hours, okay? At least seven hours. Um when you get that, then everything else kind of, it's like this big funnel. Everything gets simpler and simpler and simpler. So what, is in, what does sleep do for us? One of the things it does is that um, when, well, let me say what bad sleep does. One thing that bad sleep does is that it takes away self-control. It takes away willpower. It takes away our ability to make good decisions. Um, watch yourself one day, you know, you've had a good night's sleep and and see how you interact with life, and you've had a poor night's sleep, see how you interact with life. Um, it increases our mood. It gives us, you know, a healthier heart. It lowers our cortisol. It like increases our immune system, um, gives us clearer brain. I mean, when you sleep, you renew, okay? Sleep time is when it allows our bodies to renew, um, it allows our bodies to rebuild. It allows our brains to clear out and, you know, literally like renew. So think about that. Like a good night's sleep is really the basis for everything, for not just health. Um, Cause I mentioned, you know, I mentioned mood too, but relationships, I mean, it all matters. It all cascades down from a good night's sleep. So a couple of other things, like kind of an aside from that too, is your cortisol levels will go down with a good night's sleep. When you're stressed, uh, they stay up. When you don't sleep, they stay up. When you want to lose weight, one of the first things I suggest to clients when they tell me that they want to lose weight, I'll ask them, I'll say like, so how's your sleep? Almost always, almost always to a T. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So um, tell me about your sleep. Like, when do you go to bed? I'm usually in bed by about 10, 1030. And I'm usually asleep at least by 11, 1130. Like, okay. And when do you get up? Oh, usually I have to get up at six. So you have to be falling asleep the absolute second you get in bed, sleep all the way through and probably sleep till 630 to get a decent seven hours of sleep. People will also, also tell me, well, I don't think I need seven hours of sleep. Oh, okay. Um, why don't we do it? Why don't we do something? Let's do a little test. Okay. I want you to track your sleep using a sleep app, sleep app, um, whether it's a Fitbit or your Apple watch or your aura ring or whatever it is, track your sleep for three months and see how it correlates to the way you feel. Um, and what you're able to do, because a lot of times people just, we get, we're busy aren't we? We're also darn busy. We get, we're busy and we think that, um, we think that 
and I'm going to talk about this in a second, scrolling through our phone at night is going to relax us. It's going to put us to sleep. We think that we have so much going on that we can't stop, right? But it's the flip side. The quicker you sleep, the more sleep you have, the easier it is to get things done. Okay. You're going to have to trust me on this one a little bit, but it's something you can test, which I love. Testing your sleep is super easy. Um, before I talk about just a few tips I have on how to get a good night's sleep, I want to talk about maybe the, the thing that holds us back. What holds us back from a good night's sleep? Uh, wanting to take care of, take care of everything. Um, having stuff that feels like it's super important, right? Like, you know, you've got to get all these things done before tomorrow. So my suggestion is going to be, that, okay, this is what I do. That's why I'm going to suggest it, right? At the end of my workday, I actually sit down and I write down what the next day looks like. I write down whatever um, appointments I have. I write down whatever my priorities are for the day, what projects I have to get done. Like I write it down before I leave my desk. If I do that, I have a 95% chance of not having work and thoughts about things that didn't get done and all of that stuff encroaching on my brain when I'm thinking about going to sleep, when it's time to go to sleep. So reset yourself if possible for the next day and then walk away. Don't take, don't take your laptop to bed. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second, but don't take your laptop to bed. Um, another thing about sleep is that sleep is, it's something that we, we become habitual with. Okay. So if you sleep, um, if you go to sleep during the week, every night at like me, <laughs> okay. I'm in bed at eight 30. I'm asleep at nine. Okay. It's kind of like, I feel, I feel embarrassed sometimes telling people that because people like my friends give me a lot of grief about that. They're like, Oh, you can't go out with us because you have to be in bed. I'm like, yeah, I do actually. Um, I don't vary that much on the weekends. Actually, I might, you know, occasionally have a later night here and there, but in general, sleep is something that your, your body wants to be consistent with it. The timing is consistent. Like that works once we, once we hit that, you know, where our circadian rhythms work, then um, we like, we have this chronological order in our bodies that say, you know what, this is a good time for me to go to sleep. And some people, there are a few people out there in the world, maybe I think, I think the, um, the number is about 5% of the world is, a, they are very um, late night people. Um, and there's about probably 5% of the world that are very early morning people. I, I am one of those. I go to sleep at 8.30 or 9. I'm up at 4.30 in the morning. I'm happy. That's like, that's my, that's what works for me. But most of us, like in general, and I used to in general, go to bed a little bit later, get up a little bit earlier. I'm sorry, a little later too. But, but know that you need at the minimum, at the minimum, seven hours of sleep. Eight hours is usually one of those like, you know, brilliant spaces for us, but we need that time for our bodies to renew. Okay. So sometimes it means saying no, um, more than you'd like to about going off out at night for myself. Usually I give myself maybe one night a week, <laughs> party dog, party dog, Kelly, <laughs> but one night a week where I um, stay out later, stay up later. Maybe I go hear music or something like that. But in general, I don't, I don't do a lot of stuff and I don't stay out late because I know it's going to mess up the next day. If I am going to stay out late, the next day is going to be a rest day when it comes to my health and wellness. Um, I'm not going to do a big workout. I'm not going to do a big, you know, I'm not going to have like a big hike or bike or whatever it is because I know my body is actually not at its best for what I need to be doing. So think about that, okay? Um, sometimes we have those trade-offs, like it's just the way it is. But the funny thing is, is, you know, your friends get used to it. I, I have friends who meet me crack it on to go for hikes in the morning, right? Because that's when I'm, that's when I'm going to be able to get out there and connect with them. And so find that, find that space for you that really works. And also, Think about a few things. One of them is eating. Okay. These are, these are tips on getting to sleep and staying asleep. Okay. 
one of them, eat a little early. Okay. And by that, I mean, like, especially, especially if your meal is going to be something that's kind of like high in fat and high in protein steaks. Um, I don't know, whatever the high in fat meals are, pizza, um, whatever those are, eat a little early because you need your body to be able to digest. Okay. So you want, you want your, you know, you want yourself digested and done with that when you go to sleep. Um, have that, have the next day be cleaned up enough so that it's not going to bother you in the middle of the night. Okay. I can always tell like this last weekend, I had something going on that wasn't quite working at work. And twice in a row, I woke up three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and the first thing I thought about was that thing. And I went, okay, wait, Kelly. So how are you going to deal with this? Because you can't, <laughs> you can't be waking up at three o'clock in the morning because there's nothing you can do about it. Right. All you can do is ruminate. All you can do is lay there and go, ah, what am I going to do about this thing? Forget it. So clear it up as much as you can. Um, don't take your phone to bed. Okay. Like don't. A lot of times we tend to think that if, if we're like, just like scrolling through social media or, you know, scrolling through news or whatever it is, um, that's, you know, that's kind of like giving our brains a, a, a relax or a, or just like a time off. But the truth is, is that, you know how episodes like TV episodes have these cliffhangers. So you've got the episode, episode two, and then, you know, it's got a cliffhanger. So you got to see episode three. That's <laughs> social media is nothing but a million cliffhangers. Okay. They know the algorithm knows how to keep giving you things again and again and again, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, it doesn't matter. TV, they're going to keep giving you those things that are going to keep you looking. So know that and step away. The other thing about it is that when we're looking at our phones or even at TVs, we're, we're looking at screens and the screens have blue light. Blue light messes with our circadian rhythm. Okay. It, it makes us think that it's, it's daylight. It's time to be up. It's, it's, it's light. And so either you can wear, <laughs> I do this. This is super, super sexy. I have a pair of red light glasses or they're really actually called blue light glasses. They, they're red, big old red lenses. They go over my glasses. And if I'm going to watch TV and I don't do this every night, but a lot of times I put those on. If I feel like I'm, it's one of those nights where I feel like I'm a little bit awake than wake more awake than I should be on go those because they're going to settle my eyes. They're going to settle me down. They're going to slow down that, you know, that circadia rhythm. It's going to get it back into alignment like it should be. So have the glasses, dump the screens. Um, if you're going to look at screens at night, okay. I, um, when I wake up in the middle of the night, I do one of two things. Well, usually I wake up in the middle of the night and go pee. Then I come back and do one of two things. One of them is that I will put in a podcast that I have preset, like it's already queued up and it's, it's actually, I don't use podcasts. Actually what I use is like, um, relaxing music. So it'll be a YouTube. It's already, it's already queued up. All I have to do is push go, stick them in my ears, done. Or I will um, also, I will read on my Kindle in the middle of the night. It's on dark mode. It is, the screen is so dark that you can't see the screen during the day. Like that's how dark it is. And I keep it turned like that because I don't want to get myself, you know, re-energized with the light. So I usually have, you know, two or three pages and then boom, I'm gone out again. So those are a couple of things you can do. Um, something else you can do, and this is another one of those super exciting dorky things that you can do, is I have a red headlamp that it's, you know, literally, that's what it is. It's a red light headlamp and you can read a book with it. The reason is, is that red light is not going to mess with um, you feeling like you need to be awake. Okay. Um, I also have, this is like, <laughs> like super secret spy stuff. It's a, it's a pin. It has a light on the end of it and it's a red light. So if I wake up in the middle of the night and my brain is racing, my mind's racing, I'm having thoughts about things. And one thing I know is that if I lay there and I think about it, it's going to keep me awake. 
So I just get my notebook that I see, keep next to the bed, click on my little red pen, write my little notes in there, close the notebook, and then I go back to sleep because now the stuff that was waking me up is no longer um, there. I mean, what's better is if that if you have um, settled your brain down enough before you go to sleep so that that's not happening. Sometimes I meditate before I go to sleep. I usually don't. I usually meditate in the morning. So when I get to those points when I'm I'm catching myself stressed, highly stressed, then I do meditate before I go to sleep to see if I can just kind of calm it all down. Um, other things, what we eat and drink at night actually really matters. Um, alcohol will generally make us fall asleep quicker, but it will generally wake us up in the middle of the night. So um, if you're using if you're using that to fall asleep, know that it's usually one of those things that when it starts wearing off, it's going to wake us up. Um, sugar, sugar usually keeps us awake. Like it's a stimulant. Caffeine. People a lot of times think that if they don't have, if they, if they stop their caffeine at five o'clock in the evening, um, it can't be the caffeine that's keeping me awake. I hear this a lot. Kelly, it can't be the caffeine. I quit drinking caffeine at five. And so I will always suggest that they test it. That's all you can do is test it. If you quit drinking caffeine at five, then try quitting at three and see if there's a difference. Try quite try quitting at noon. Um, personally, for me, noon. I'm I have a cup of cup a cup of caffeinated coffee in the morning. I might have an iced tea if I go out for lunch. After that, I don't drink anything caffeinated um, because. Why, sh why should I take the chance, right? Because I don't want to be laying awake thinking, ah, I didn't need that. So um, even decaf, even decaf tea and coffee can have ca caffeine in it. So just think about it when you're doing it. Um, some of the other things. When you wake up, if you wake up in the middle of the night, then don't stimulate your brain, okay? And by that, what I mean is, like if I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm going to, not listen to the music, but I'm going to try and read my Kindle, then that book that I have that's queued up is not very exciting. Trust me. It's it's a book that's not going to interest me enough to keep me awake. Um, one of my clients, she told me that she uses a podcast, I think it's called, And Nothing Happened. <laughs> I was like, tell me about this. And she said, basically, it's just stories and nothing really happens. Like there's no big plot line. There's, you know, there's no cliffhangers. There's, there's just somebody with a nice voice just talking about stuff. And I thought, wow, that's brilliant. If you think about it, it's brilliant. It's that thing that's just going to put us back into that sleep where we need to be. Um, you might also think about if, if you wake up and other things that are um, disturbing you is, um, sorry, I, I got up, I got disturbed. So, um, but just think about all those things that can slow you down, calm you down, calm your brain down. And when you're awake in the middle of the night and you can't sleep, okay? This happens sometimes. You're awake in the middle of the night, you cannot sleep. And then you start stressing because you go, well, Kelly said, sleeping is the most important thing I can do for my fitness. Um, have options, okay? Have options for yourself. And maybe those options are that relaxing music. Maybe it's, you know, a red light with an easy book to read. Maybe it's writing your dreams. Like sometimes, you ever had those nights when you like really want to remember your dreams? Well, what happens? You fall back to sleep, right? <laughs> so think about your dreams. Write them down in your notebook with your little dorky red pen. Um, Whatever it is, and if you get to that point where you just really simply cannot fall back asleep, give yourself grace. Make the next day a rest day. Take, make it a day that doesn't matter that much when it comes to your you know, workouts or whatever it is. And maybe, maybe take a bath if that works for you. Um, one thing I didn't mention is sometimes drinking, um, either taking a bath, with using Epsom salts and magnesium or drinking something. I use something called Calm, C-A-L-M. It's a magnesium drink. I make it into like a little tea, hot water, put the Calm in there, fizzes up a little bit. And it's just magnesium will help you slow down and calm down. 
and go to sleep. It's one of those things that helps. Sometimes melatonin helps. I find that it, for me, I don't think melatonin does anything and I don't know why, but for a lot of people, I suggest, you know, have some melatonin beside your bed. And if you're awake and you're not falling back to sleep, try it. All you can do with these things is test and figure out what works for you. Okay. In the end, I, well, I, I'm going to have three steps for you um, when we when we wrap this podcast up, but I just want you to know that consider, just consider that if you make sleep one of your fitness pillow, pillars <laughs> or pillows, either way, one of your fitness pillars, I believe that you might see a lot of good changes if you don't give yourself that opportunity. If right now you are someone who, you know, burns a candle at both ends, you, you're you busy, 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 and you don't fall asleep until 11 o'clock at night, and then you're up at five o'clock in the morning to go work out, consider for a short while, maybe just three months, just try it, just, just test it, right? See what happens when you give yourself the gift of more sleep. So when we come back, I wanna give you my three quick steps for potentially having a better night's sleep. All right, so here's here's a couple of them. Step one, step one. Try this, just try this, try it for a few weeks. Give yourself a bedtime that you think you can do and stick to it, okay? So when I say that, let's say you decide that you've been going to sleep at 10, 30 or 11 and you're gonna start going to sleep at 9.30 then start winding down by nine, um, have, oh, this is, this is step two, um, figure out what you're going to need to get there. Okay. What are you going to need? Are you going to do some of the things that I suggested? Like maybe you're going to have a cup of magnesium tea an hour before you go to sleep. And why I say an hour is that you want to give it time to go through your system. So you go pee, so you don't not getting up at 10 30 at night to do that. So maybe that's what you're going to use. Maybe you're going to, um, maybe you're going to st stop scrolling. You're not going to even take that phone to bed. Like my phone goes to the bedroom because I have um, that music queued up and I use it for my meditation in the morning. It actually goes in my drawer because I don't want it anywhere around me. I don't want to see it. I don't want to think about it. It's, it's out of sight unless I need it. So maybe, maybe queue up some music that you find relaxing. Um, maybe queue up like, Calm, C-A-L-M, another calm. Ha no, no, I'm wrong. I think it's called Headspace. Headspace has some pretty good um, go to sleep apps or go to sleep. I don't know. They're meditations. They're pretty casual meditations that you can use. But come up with a few things that are going to lower you and slow you down so that when you get in bed, you're not thinking, your mind's not racing, um, you're not focusing on what needs to happen tomorrow or what didn't happen today, you're focusing on, hmm, I'm looking forward to a really good night's sleep. Um, and then the last thing is, is that you might want to consider, if you don't do it now, tracking your sleep, at least track it for a little while. If you find, okay, there's, there's, a, there's a pro and a con to tracking. If you track your sleep and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not sleeping enough. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Doesn't do you any good. All that does is like get you worked up and um, make you unhappy actually. Um, but if you start tracking your sleep, we love gamifying things. Like that is, that's why, that's why apps and social media are so um, successful, right? It's a gamification. So when you use an, some sort of app to track, um, for me, it's the Aura Ring. For other people, it might be Fitbit, might be your Apple Watch. I mean, everybody's got it. There's all whoop, there's, that's another one that's out there. There's a lot of great apps out there. Um, if you're willing to use it and not let it run your life, then, then you can start seeing your improvement. And as you see improvement, then it becomes easier and easier and easier because we love things that help us improve. Okay. I'm going to wrap up and just tell me, I'd love to hear, hit me on social do it on uh, the website. Let me know. I want to know how's your sleep? How long are you really sleeping? And what are you going to do differently? So thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. See you.